Welcome to the Air Gun Show. In this week's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at a great little ballpup air gun. Before that, though, I'm heading into the woods at dusk. Well, that squirrel was initially a bit fidgety, but it couldn't resist that pheasant feed and it paid the price for it. Now, the squirrels here are causing all sorts of problems, not just stealing pheasant feed, but they're also wrecking the young trees with their bark stripping. So I'm gonna keep still and keep quiet and hopefully we can get a few more from here. in the tree, mate. Well, that one dangled for a bit. Not that long, and it's something I've talked about so many times before. It's a really typical nervous reaction for squirrels when you hit them squarely in the head. They often clench for a little while and that makes them hang on and dangle. Now, that one actually had what looked like a berry in its mouth, so there's obviously more attraction in this area than just those pheasant feeders. Right, well, as you've probably been able to see, I've literally just tucked myself into some natural cover here, about 30 metres from a couple of feeders, which tend to get a lot of attention from squirrels. But in all honesty, it hasn't been as busy as I would have expected. Um, also, it was quite overcast when we arrived, and it's actually cleared off, so I think we're gonna have more remaining light than I'd counted on. So. We're going to move off and try another spot. Um, again, it's quite close to the release pen. I know there are quite a few squirrels around there, so I'm hoping that they're going to be sort of venturing out on their dusk feeding spree and we'll catch them there. Um, before I do that though, let's have a quick look through the kit that I'm using on this session. So the gun is the Daystate Huntsman Revere and it's the Safari Edition with the lovely rough cut stock that I really like. Um, Firstly, this woodwork, it doesn't tend to show dents and scratches that you tend to pick up in the field uh, like a more sort of cleanly finished gun. But also I think it blends in brilliantly with the natural environment and also it's got that adjustable cheek piece which just increases the comfort of shooting it, gives you that nice eye alignment. This one is sub 12 foot pounds, so it's very quiet, perfect for this sort of shooting. 177 caliber and I'm running it on QIS pellets. I think it's a 9.56 grain domed version. Been using them with this gun and others for quite a while now. Some of my guns absolutely love them. Like all QIS pellets, they're really neat, really clean, very consistent and I can't guarantee they'll work in every air gun but they're certainly worth a try. Um, optics wise, 
I've got the MTC King Cobra 4 to 16 by 50 F2, and I know that for a fact because I'm reading it off of the lens. Um, again, this is this is one of my optics that I use quite regularly. This this is a real go-to combo. It's a brilliant scope, as I always say. Any scope cam footage that we feature through it, it's probably not going to be anything like as good as I'm seeing because you've got additional lenses, problems with focusing, and on cold days like today, my breath fogging it up too. So. As with all scopes, if you want to see how good they are, take a look through them yourself. But th this this is a scope that I have absolute faith in, and as ever, it's held on with sports match mounts. So that's the kit. In fact, one other item that I think is well worth mentioning, especially on days like this when you're moving about a bit, is a beanbag seat, which you won't see, but it's light, easy to carry around, and for the comfort not only of having that nice cushion, but on cold days like today, having something dry to sit on, insulating your backside from that cold frozen ground, it, it's brilliant and obviously also gives that really stable shooting platform because it moulds to you. So if you don't have a beanbag seat, go and get yourself one. So that's the kit. Let's pick up, move on and try another spot. There you go. That squirrel started to move just as I pulled the trigger, but it only moved by a fraction. As, as I hope you will have seen, it was still a very, very clean headshot. Now the light's starting to go now, so I hope we will see that flurry of activity leading up to darkness. Now, apologies if you can hear a bit of car noise from the road behind me, but as I often say, bit of background noise does help to mask the noise that we're making so hopefully it won't do us any harm at all. Same place as before. Well, that was fortunate, for me anyway. Now, there's a little bit of remaining dry leaf in the way of that squirrel initially. And just so I was wondering what to do, it moved just a bit to give me a really nice clear shot at its head. Um, yeah, it was actually very close to where I shot that previous one, so that's clearly a spot that's worth keeping an eye on.
one from the fader at last. And uh, the disturbance of that shot, or the pellet hitting home, actually started another squirrel off chattering in the distance, but I think I am gonna make that the last one this evening for, well, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the light's starting to go now, and, and the problem is I lose a lot of light through the scope cam, and I'm actually struggling to see through it now, and certainly will as the light goes anymore, but also it's pretty cold in the woods this evening, so it'll be nice to get home and warm up. Um, We've had a decent tally though, and I think the key point probably to take away from this session is how useful it can be just to settle in amongst some natural cover, keep still and quiet, as long as you're in the right spot. And in this case, although we've only actually shot one at the feeder, it's the presence of that food that has made this area attractive to squirrels, I'm sure, and that, that's why we've got shots here. So. You don't always have to go to the trouble of building a hide. If you're still and quiet, and as I say, got a bit of cover around you, it's surprising how once you've allowed things to settle down, squirrels will start moving and coming out again. Right then, so I'm gonna get these picked up and head for home. A great twilight session on the squirrels there. Next up, let's take a look at the Reximex Zone Bullpup. Reximex has completely changed my perception of Turkish air guns over the past couple of years. Now, this gunmaker seems to be able to consistently come up with kit that strikes just the right balance between affordability, reliability, and accuracy. Now, this one is no exception. It's the zone, and it's distributed in the UK by Rangerite. Like all the other Reximex air guns that I've handled, the build quality on this one is nice and solid. Now, as you can see, it's a bullpup, and it handles really nicely. It weighs about 3.5 kilos, and that bullpup configuration keeps the length down to about 89 centimeters. This model has a Turkish walnut stock, and it has a recommended retail price of 565 pounds. Now there's also a model with a synthetic stock, and the recommended retail price for that one is 515 pounds. Both of them are ambidextrous. Now, the foreend of the stock features some vents which look good and also improve grip for your leading hand. And the underside of the foreend is also equipped with a thread for the attachment of a supplied Picatinny rail for attaching accessories. I really like the way that the trigger guard is incorporated into the walnut stock. Now that guard sweeps back into the pistol grip and although the grip looks quite simplistic, it actually features some really nice design features. It's got some tidy stippling, it's really comfortably contoured and most importantly, it sets me up well for the trigger. Behind the pistol grip, there's a large stylish thumb hole cutaway that sweeps back into the butt section which is finished with a rubber pad and that butt pad is adjustable on the synthetic stock option. Now, one thing I really like on this stock is the adjustable cheek support. Now, you can add or remove the shims that sit beneath that cheek support to get it to exactly the right height to give you perfect eye alignment with your chosen scope. I've already said that the build quality seems very good, and that's also apparent in the clean black finish of the metalwork and in the general neatness of the engineering. Now, scope attachment is via a long Picatinny rail, which gives you about 25 centimeters of clamping space. Now, the front section of the barrel is housed inside a chunky shroud. 
Now that shroud does actually provide a reasonable amount of sound suppression, but it is also threaded for silencer attachment should you want to fit one. The Zone is a multi-shot PCP and it comes supplied with two magazines and a single shot tray. Magazine capacity is 12 shots in 22 caliber and 14 in 177. Now, to load the magazine, you hold it with the clear plate facing towards you and then rotate the plate clockwise until it stops when the hole aligns with the first bay. Now you then push a pellet nose first into that hole and that holds the inner drum under spring tension. You then simply turn the plate back, dropping a pellet into each bay as you go until it's full. The cocking and loading process is taken care of by a side lever action. Now the lever on the zone features a really nice drop down handle plus it's reversible for left handers which is a really nice touch. In operation it's slick and reliable and keeps the shots coming just as it should. I always try to manage my expectations when it comes to triggers on ballpup air guns, but the one on the zone is actually pretty good, especially at this price point. Now the match type blade is adjustable for height and angle and the mechanism is also adjustable, although I prefer to test triggers straight out of the box. Now, as with several Reximex air guns that I've used in the past, the first stage on this unit is very short. There is a little bit of play in the second stage, but it's consistent so its breakpoint soon becomes absolutely predictable. The safety catch is a paddle type switch and it's positioned just in front of the trigger blade. Now it's in the safe position when it's over to the right and you simply push it across to the left when you're ready to take the shot. As you can see, the zone has quite an elegant air cylinder. Now it's got a 260cc capacity and maximum fill pressure is 250 bar. Now the air pressure in the cylinder is displayed on a gauge at its front. Now from a full fill, you should be able to expect about 170 shots in 177 caliber and about 200 in 22. And when it's time to refill, you simply remove the collar from the front of the cylinder and plug in with the supplied probe. The zone has adjustable power. Now the dial for doing that is just in front of the magazine slot and on its lowest setting, it takes power down to about six and a half foot pounds. Now, this air gun has a regulated firing cycle and it's pretty consistent. Now, at full output, the 2.2 caliber test gun was running a muzzle energy of about 11.4 foot pounds and pellets, the variation was staying within seven feet per second over a string of 10 shots. A regulator pressure is displayed on the gauge just in front of the power dial. Accuracy wise, I've been really impressed with this little ballpup. Now it's consistent power output obviously plays a big part, but the fact that it's a really comfortable gun to shoot also really helps. Now shooting rested and in windless conditions, I've been hitting reactive targets at 50 meters without too much trouble. On paper, it's printing cloverleaf groups at 40 meters with a variety of different pellets. So I would certainly feel confident using this air gun to tackle live quarry. So that is the Reximex zone. Now, if you had asked me two years ago, if you could get a ballpup of this quality for well under 600 pounds, or in the case of the synthetic stock model, around 500 pounds, I would have said it's impossible. However, Reximex has earned itself a great reputation for producing some really good air guns at remarkable prices. Now, I think they're on to another real winner here and it should be a great choice for shooters who want a decent ballpup that won't break the bank.
I'm afraid that's all we've got time for in this week's episode, but as ever, I'll be back with more in two weeks' time. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to check out the subscription offers that we have for Airgun World magazine. You should be able to find a link to that in the show description. Also, tune in for the Airgun World podcast, which goes out fortnightly every other Friday on this channel. So, I'll see you again in a fortnight. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe. Book a ticket to the Great British Shooting Show today. Enjoy free car parking and a free show guide and the largest selection of shooting retailers under one roof. It's the biggest, the best, the British.